possible defensive player of the year on the Baltimore Ravens? That would be something, right? But who would be the candidates? Do they have one in particular that's just been holding it down all year? Or do they possibly have several? Let's hear from uh, my guy Elijah on this first question on this episode of Questions from Subs. He said, I hope all is well, fella. I hope family and friends are doing great. Oh, yeah, everybody's doing wonderful. I appreciate you. He said, when are we going to talk about Justin Matabike? Oh, I mean, we, we talk about him all the time, but... He said for defensive player of the year. Uh, he has nine and a half sacks as a defensive tackle. That's amazing. Uh, and the league leader has 11. Sorry for the long question. God bless and hope everything is well. What? You, you think that was a long question? What? Trust me, my friend. That wasn't nothing. But see, Justin Matabike, he's been having an amazing season. And... We love it. Uh, he certainly made his impact known. And, and the thing about the thing that I really appreciate about sacks, I, I do not believe that sacks are overrated. I, I disagree wholeheartedly when people say that because a sack, it ends everything. It ends everything. Well, not necessarily, but a sack shows that you not only have pass rush skills, but you're a closer. You get the job done. Like as a pass rusher, yeah, pass, pressure is very important and we love pressure. But sacks, they bring down the play. Now, with a sack, there can be a fumble. So it doesn't necessarily end everything. Well, normally for the quarterback it does, but it doesn't necessarily end the play, but it's usually a big negative play if there's a fumble too. It could be a turnover or the offense could recover. Anyway, Justin Matter BK showing that he's a closer. And something else that he's closing in on <laughs> is money. And I, I, I'm going to be happy for him. Wherever he gets his bread from, I do think it's going to be the Baltimore Ravens, but wherever he gets his bread from, I'm happy for him, man. Because I love just having seen the growth. I remember when we first drafted him. I didn't know who he was. So I, what I did, I watched film on him. And I was like, oh, this guy, he can be an interior or an exterior pass rusher. He can get it both ways. And he did. Um, so the fact that he's just been doing an amazing job is great. Defensive player of the year, I don't think that um, his name Defensive players of the year, in my opinion, I think they go to, not that it should continue to be like this, but they go to more household names. So I think right now the league is looking at a Miles Garrett, looking at a um, TJ Watt, looking at a uh, Crosby maybe, but probably not. He's not a big enough name. He's close, but I think they're looking at more at those guys. Um, now, uh, another option, I mean, speaking of possible Ravens for defensive players of the year, Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton. Like, Kyle Hamilton, and not, not that he's going to get the accolade, because he, he, I know he doesn't have all the sexy numbers, so that's a big part of it, too. Now, with Matt Abike, he does have the sexy numbers, nine and a half sacks through 11 games. That's great. Um, so, more to come. We're about to have our first double-digit sack guy in a long time. But with Kyle Hamilton, I, I think if, if we're talking about on the actual Ravens, like, not the whole NFL, because he ain't going to get it right now for the whole NFL. Um he would be a candidate on the actual team, the Baltimore Ravens. Or if you wanted to give a most improved player uh, or most steadily, most player that has steady growth. Because um, Kyle Hamilton, again, he is listed as a safety. But he ain't no safety, man. Kyle Hamilton is not no safety. He is a baller. That's it. That's his, that's his job title. That's his position. That's his role. He is a baller. He literally does every single thing. Everything. He'll drop back and play some safety. He'll come up and play some corner. He'll play slot corner. He'll be a pass rusher. Kyle Hamilton does everything, man. And he, I'm like, every time we watch him play, I'm like, man, this guy is amazing, man. He is amazing to me. He, he is just such a great player. And he keeps getting better. This is his second year, man. Like, I, I just love watching Kyle Hamilton play. Because he gives it his all. He plays with so much effort. He plays with heart. Uh, and he now... There can be some guys that can play with all those things, but they might not even be good. But they, they trying, so you respect it. But Kyle Hamilton, he gives all those things, and he's great. He's a great player, man. He's a great player. The growth has been tremendous, man, and we love it. Now, somebody else who could be up there, Roquan Smith, obviously. Roquan, now, Roquan Smith, he is the one on the Baltimore Ravens defense that is the, uh, the, the, more, the household name, the name that more people know about. So if... Defensive player of the year was going to go. It's not going to go to Roquan Smith, but if it was going to possibly go to anybody on the Ravens, that would be the one because people know who Roquan Smith is. Uh, but Roquan Smith, while he does have a big name, he also got a big game too. Um, 
Now, uh, he'd just be making like 50 million tackles every single game. Uh, the last couple of games, uh, he he made some nice tackles. He hasn't made the, the wow plays the fast couple of games, but he's still been holding it down. Now, somebody else who, again, he doesn't have the name, but Geno Stone. Leading the league in interceptions, I still think to this point, man, he could have had a uh, an even bigger lead uh, had if, if Kyle Hamilton. Cause I know Kyle Hamilton, he got his pick six that week against the Browns, so he wanted that second pick. Uh, I know Geno wanted that pick, too, on that, that Hail Mary right before halftime, and, and they bumped into each other. I said, oh, man, I get it, though. They both wanted it. So I, I get it. I ain't mad at it because um, it would have just been another stat for the Baltimore Ravens. But, um, yeah, man, Geno Stone, he um, he been doing his thing. Now, the Ravens, since Marcus Williams has been back, uh, they I think they had Geno Stone playing more like the strong safety role instead of the free safety role. So we'll see how that impacts everything or anything. Um, but, yeah, man, he's been holding it down too. But, again, I feel like Geno Stone could lead the league in interceptions and they would still not give him defensive player of the year. Say for, now, maybe if he got like 10 interceptions, maybe maybe I still don't even think they would give it to him. I don't. Because, again, the way that the NFL normally does, they go by name. They go by your name. Uh, if you're a well-known person, then yeah, you'll have the edge over some guys. Guys that could be ballers. Guys that could go do the same stuff as you. But since they got the name, then NFL will be like, oh, no, no. It's going to them. Now, this question, it came before the game against the Bengals, but it's still something that should be talked about. It came from my guy, Dylan. He said, and I don't know, I didn't see it before because it went to my spam. But anyway, it said, we need to chill. Uh, what's up, Ben Graven? Hope the fam is doing well. I was wondering if you think the Ravens fans overreact to everything. I just noticed because my best friend is a Chiefs fan that Chiefs fans are always completely unfazed when something bad happens to the Chiefs. They lost 24-9 against the Broncos and none of the Chiefs fans cared. I think Ravens fans need to have more trust in the organization. We can't win every game, especially against division opponents. To call for a coach's head for being 7-3 and three is kind of insane. Sorry for the long question and statement. Hope all is well and like the Ravens fans with trust, I'm out. <laughs> stupid <laughs> that's a really good question that's a really good um point you made especially about Chiefs fans uh but I think the reason why Ravens fans overreact and I can't even necessarily call it overreacting but Ravens fans they are fed up with the same old stuff um Ravens fans are tired and there is a lack of trust I do believe a lot of times between a lot of Ravens fans and the front office or the coaching staff or the team and whatnot because they just they have not had the success long term yet um in a regular season and, and i think with, with ravens fans their frustration comes when ravens they see ravens doing a lot of same things that they have been doing for years they see a lot of the same tendencies and whatnot and then when those things happen like when when ravens are winning you can still see some of the same tendencies and i think that it's important even when you're winning to point that stuff out and to take care of it but especially when they lose i think that's when ravens fans then they, then they start thinking long term like man how, why and how are we losing like this? And then they start thinking about the playoffs. They think, start thinking, oh, man, this team, oh, if they doing it now in the regular season, are they going to carry this over to the playoffs too? Uh, so they start thinking about that. Um, now with Chiefs, I think Chiefs fans, they have a lot more trust in their coaching staff and their players because their coaching staff and players have shown recently that they can get it done. They've been to those Super Bowls. They've been to, what, three Super Bowls. They won two out of the three. So if you won two out of three Super Bowls in the past couple of years, then what was it, 2019 when they won the first one? And then 20, a couple years after that. And then they have been to another one too. But if you, um, if you win, you won Super Bowls recently with the head coach that you got, with the quarterback that you got, if you won recently, then, yeah, they got every reason to trust, like, hey, we could do it again. And they've been to, like, a million AFC championships in a row, I think. Yeah. They've been to all that last AFC championships because it's just been Chiefs. It's been the, Chief, the AF, AF Chiefs championship. So it's like that, that, that's why their fans, I think, wouldn't overreact to something. They know, oh, yeah, it happens, but we, we know how things go in the long run. We know we got – the best quarterback in the game, Patrick Mahomes, and oh, we 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 we'll be fine. So that's the thing. Now we know um the Ravens, you know, Lamar Jackson is obviously amazing, amazing quarterback, amazing amazing person too. So shout out to Lamar. Um, 
But with, with Ravens fans, I think when, when you talk about the lack of trust that they have with the organization, it's because we haven't advanced yet. We haven't gone far into the playoffs yet. And it's been a long – like that Super Bowl was 20, the 2012 season. That was 11 years ago right now. And after this season, it'll be – well, technically it'll be uh, – it was in the year 2013. And then this season, after this season, it'll be the year 2024. So, yeah, still 11 years. But that, that was a long time ago. That was not recently. So I think that's where the lack of trust comes at f- between fans and the coaching staff. Should they have more trust for the coaching staff? I cannot blame fans if they don't because it's all about what have you done for me lately. And lately, the Ravens, come playoff time, they haven't done much. Now, context is important too with that because context, you can look at the Ravens' recent playoff or lack of playoff success recently. You can say, man, Ravens ain't been doing nothing in the playoffs. But then at the same time, um, last year they didn't have Lamar Jackson. He had missed the end of the year, so they didn't have him. So we'll never know what they could have possibly done last year. The year before, they were set to be in the playoffs. They were number one seed at one point. But Lamar Jackson went out with injury, so they, <coughs> they didn't have him down the stretch. They missed the playoffs. Then the year before that, they had him in the first game, and they won against the Titans. Then they had him in the Bills game, but then he had that nasty concussion where he just – his head hit the turf and it bounced and whatnot. And, ooh, that was ugly. But um, so they didn't have him for the rest of the game. And then, of course, they, they end up losing that game. So that ended the playoffs. So that's important context, too. So we haven't had to get full closure on how far this team can possibly go. But hopefully this is the year where the rate, because they got the team to do it. Even though they lost Mark Andrews still, they still got a team to overcome that, to get as far as they want to. In the playoffs, it's just a matter of making it happen.